In this video, we're going to use technology to help us in summarizing numerical data. In particular, we're going to use a program online called GeoGebra. So as you watch this video, please have this page open in your notes and access to a computer so you can follow along with me. So to begin, open up a new browser and go to geogebra.org. When you get to this page, you should see some menu options in the middle of the page. Go to the bank called Ready for Tests and click on GeoGebra Classic. From here, uh, this menu will pop up. If you don't see it, then you can go over to the right hand side of your screen on the upper right here and click on Perspectives. From there, you'll get a list of available apps that you can use in GeoGebra. For this video, we're going to look at spreadsheets. So from here, we're going to use this program, the spreadsheets in GeoGebra, to help us draw a histogram of the fictional exam scores on our note sheet. So what I'd like you to do is click on the first column here and just start to enter the fictional scores that you see on our notes. So please take a moment to pause the video and fill these numbers in for yourself. All right, so in some situations, you'll be given a spreadsheet of data, and to enter into the GeoGebra, you can copy and paste those data values into the spreadsheet. Because we're looking at the data values from our notes, we've just typed them in here. So from here, what we can do is select that data. So just, just click, uh, hold, and drag uh, to select all that data, and then click on this little graph here in the upper left corner that looks like a histogram. Then select one variable analysis. We have one numerical data value or one numerical variable. Uh, so that will be the type of display that we wanna look at. And here a histogram pops up for us. Now I encourage you to play around with GeoGebra. Try looking at different views. Some other boxes pop up here. So here's a slightly different way of representing the axes. You can just close some things down so that the look is nice and clean for you. All right, so congratulations. You've made your first histogram on GeoGebra. And now there's uh, some more things that you can play around with here. So you'll notice that this tab here is labeled as histogram, and that's because what we're looking at, what we've created is a histogram. But you can also see some other graphs and visualizations of our data. So we could also select box plot and GeoGebra has created a box plot for us. Notice the outlier here, uh, uh, de labeled with that star. You can also look at a dot plot, which we've seen before in these notes. So go back to histogram, and now we just wanna play around and take a look at the bars here. So as labeled, my bars are a little off-center from say a, a bin width of 10. So to change your bin width, you can go up to the top of your screen and click on this little icon, this little gear icon for settings. From there, you wanna click on under classes, set classes manually. So GeoGebra call, calls the bins classes. So from there, this little menu will pop up and what you first put uh, in the first box is the starting value of your bin. So it starts at zero. We could also say start at the five mark. We see that our bins start at five. And then you can also control the bin width. So say we want to start at 30, because that's where our data starts, and have a bin width of 10. And you see that cleans up our, our graph quite a bit, and we have a nice looking histogram here. And when there are menu, op, uh, menu lists or menu options open and you want to cancel them, then there are various places, little arrows, that will help bring those down for you. Uh, you can also re-click on the gear and that will uh, take that setting menu uh, away. All right, now just a few other awesome features about GeoGebra. If you notice on the upper right hand side of your screen, there should be this little sigma and then an X. Let's click on that and notice that a table is now displayed for us. This table contains all of the summary information that we care about for our data. So in particular, N tells us the sample size. The mean is that X bar, the sample mean. 
right x bar because I'm typing here. But please, when you're following along with the video, write this down on our note sheet so that you can have this for later. Now, this next number here is sigma. That's the population standard deviation. For our class, you can go ahead and ignore that. That's a slightly different formula than this sample standard deviation that we saw in a previous video. And this next number here, S, that's gonna be our sample standard deviation. So that's that beautiful formula that we computed in a previous video. And then here we have two numbers, uh, the sum of the deviations, the sum of the deviations squared. And those two numbers we saw in a previous video when we computed by hand the sample standard deviation. And then now if we notice these next five numbers, min, q1, median, q3, and max, do those numbers look familiar? Right on, those five numbers are the five number summary. All right, so again, I encourage you to play around some more here with GeoGebra, experiment with different sizes of bins with different ways you can label axes and different ways that you can label the grids. All right. Thank you for watching. Keep up the hard work.